This next bit is where we're going to learn how to differentiate other trig functions. Because so far, we know how to differentiate E, ln, polynomials, uh, sine, cos, the last piece of the pattern, the last piece of the puzzle that we haven't learned how to differentiate are the other trig functions. And the other trig functions are tan, sec, cosec, and cot. Once we know how to differentiate those things, we know how to differentiate all the functions that we could come across. So this is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle of how we do all the differentiation, and then we're going to be starting to think about applying it as we go through. So you probably might be thinking to yourself, why didn't he show us how to differentiate tan x at the start of this? What do you think, why do you think I waited until this lesson to try and show you how we will differentiate tan x? Pardon? It's not a simple no, because, because it's sine x over cos x. And sine x over cos x would require the quotient rule. Okay, And remember, the quotient rule is based on the product rule, so it's all based on the same things. So it is a bit more complicated. You're right, it is a bit more complicated. But I didn't want to tell you what it differentiates to until we can confidently say that tan x is the same as sine x over cos x. And then we can apply the quotient rule to this. So for the quotient rule, u is sine x and u dash is cos x. The denominator v is cos x and v dash is minus sine x because cos goes to minus sine. And when we do our vuv over v squared, we will be doing v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. So we're going to differentiate it and find out what tan differentiates to. So v u dash, that's cos x times cos x, which is cos squared x. And we're going to subtract sine x times minus sine x, which is minus sine squared x. So we're subtracting minus sine squared x. And we're going to divide it by v squared, which is cos squared x. So minus minus sine squared x is actually just cos squared x plus sine squared x, which is equal to 1. So the numerator is 1. The denominator is cos squared x, which is sec squared x. So tan differentiates to sec squared x. And I've got that written at the bottom. When you differentiate tan of kx, you would get k sec squared kx. That's really just like the chain rule that we're saying here. Like if you were going to differentiate tan of blah, when you differentiate that, you would get sec squared blah times by the derivative of blah. So it's just the standard thing that it does. Like how ln goes to 1 over and how sine goes to cos, tan goes to sec squared. And notice how the blah, the argument, will remain the same. So if that's a function to the right, like, you don't show that it's tan of tan. No, 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 no. This now, you are going to now memorize that tan differentiates to sec squared x. And you can just use it instantly. There's a reason I know that tan differentiates to sec squared that's got nothing to do with like any maths reason why it's true. But tan and sec have appeared together once before. Where did tan and sec appear together once before? What other identity? Good. The other identity that we came across was... 1 plus tan squared x is equal to sec squared x. So this is, there's no mathematical connection between this identity and the fact that tan differentiates to sec squared. But in a memory connection, a way that you can remember this is if you remember that 1 plus tan squared goes to sec squared, that might help your brain to go, oh, well, tan differentiates to sec squared. They've already appeared together in an identity, and they do appear together again. Even though this is tan squared, it's just a reminder that tan and sec are the ones that are going to have this connection. It's not exactly like this perfect thing, but it's a memory tip, OK? And sometimes memory tips aren't necessarily going to be mathematical. They're just ways of us remembering things that we've got. So tan is going to go to sec squared. 
we're going to look at what sec x now differentiates to. Okay. So sec x is 1 over cos x. You could use the product rule and you could say it was cos x to the minus 1 if you wanted to. But I'm going to use the quotient rule because that's what we've been focusing on today. u is 1, v is cos x, u dash is 0, 1 differentiates to 0, and v dash is minus sin x. So when I differentiate these, I'm going to get yes. All, all, all careful, so we have v times u dash minus u times v dash. So that's going to be zero minus minus sine x. So it's going to be zero minus minus sine x, which is obviously just going to be sine x, all divided by cos squared x, which I'm going to write as cos squared x. So I say that sec x differentiates to sine x over cos squared x. But we don't really want to write it like that. We want to write it in a slightly different kind of way. There's a tan, there's a tan in here, isn't there? So there's going to be a tan x multiplied by a 1 over cos x, because that's sine x over cos x. Good. So it's actually going to be the way that we commonly write this. Instead of writing tan x sec x, we actually write that it goes to sec x tan x. That's sec, sec x, and the tan x is still there. So the derivative of sec x is sec x tan x. Really weird that it appears in its own derivative. And so I'm going to write that more generally, when you differentiate sec of blah, you would get sec blah tan blah times by the derivative of blah. And that's what I've said down here, that sec x differentiates, sec of kx goes to k sec kx tan kx. The blah has stayed the same, and k is the derivative of blah. That's just a, a particular kind of one that you've got there. And again, sec and tan are in the same thing together. We had 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared. We've now got sec going to sec x tan x. These are in the formula book. They're not in the formula book in like an explicit kind of way. They're kind of, they're sometimes a little bit of the differentiation section. Some, some of them are in some of the integration section. I don't want you to look through the formula book to find these. I want you to know that tan differentiates to sec squared and sec goes to sec tan. And that's part of what your job will be when you're revising is getting these things into your head. The other part of the job is when you're doing your homework, you're not just going to be using your um, notes to do this. You should be trying to do it from memory and then checking your notes, OK? Because that's how we learn things, by doing things without the support, OK? So there are some other ones which we're not necessarily going to look at. And these are standard results. When I say a standard result, that means you can just use this without having to prove it. So we've already talked about the fact that tan differentiates to sec squared and sec differentiates to sec x tan x. If you want to, you can investigate these yourself but we have cot x and we have cosec x. Now cot x goes to minus cosec squared x, and cosec x goes to minus cosec x cot x. So there's some similarities of things that we've got here, and I've written that for the memory tip that I've got. For the memory tip, to memorize the two on the right here, notice that when we co the two on the left, in other words, if I was going to put a co so that it was no longer sec, but it was cosec. We also co each of the bits on the right, and we negate it. So the derivative of cosec x is cosec x cot x and negated. And instead of tan x, if I was going to do cot, because cot is cot x, it would go to cosec squared x and negated. Do, I want, do you want me to say that one more time of what's actually what I mean for how I remember it? Yeah. So it is the same thing as these formulae that we've got here. Cot is like the co version of tan, because it's got it's it's actually cotangent. 
and cosec squared is the co version of sec squared. I've added the co in front of it, but I also added in a negative. And for this one down here, cosec x is the co version of sec x. I've also made the sec x here become cosec. The tan has become cot. I've added the co and I've negated the overall expression. So you're not memorizing all four of these. I don't remember all four of these. My brain remembers this one and this one, and it remembers then if I want to change it to from tan to cot, I take that answer, I put a co in front of it so it's no longer sec squared, it's cosec squared, and I negate it. And the same thing for this. I will remember sec. If I want to find out what cosec is, it will be minus cosec cot. And it's a standard thing that you need to try and get those into your head, which will mean looking at these things without trying to, without trying to use the, the sheet to help you to do this, okay? And obviously this applies that if it was cot of blah, it would go to minus cosec squared of blah multiplied by the derivative of blah because of the chain rule. So we've now got these standard functions. You may like to investigate why these differentiate to these, but you can do that just using the quotient rule, just like we did for tan and sec that we have. So we're going to try and apply these. You may like to use these for when we do the next bit that we've got here. We're going to try and differentiate. It's kind of not clear that these are two separate questions. That's a sec cubed x. We're going to be differentiating cosec 2x over x squared. And then we're going to be differentiating y equals sec cubed x. So this first one that I've got, that y equals cosec 2x over x squared is going to require the use of the quotient rule, which means u is cosec 2x, and we're going to do u dash, and v is x squared, and we're going to find out what v dash is. So cosec 2x. What does cosec 2x go to? It's going to go to minus cosec 2x, cot 2x. And the derivative of the blah that we have here is 2. So it's minus 2 cosec 2x, cot 2x. And then v dash is obviously 2x. So that means that dy by dx is those two minus those two. So minus 2x squared cosec 2x cot 2x minus 2x cosec 2x all divided by x squared squared, which is x to the power of 4. We could simplify this. We'll do a little bit of simplifying here. We'll do some factors in the numerator. What's the common factor in the numerator, Ishraq? Minus 2x cosec 2x is the common factor, which would then leave me with x cot 2x plus 1, I think. And that is going to be divided by x to the power of 4. And there's one final thing I can do. I can cancel this x with this 4, which I can then replace with a 3. Why can't I cancel one of the x's with this? Good, that's the argument. You can't manipulate the argument. The argument stays as it is. Okay, We can't manipulate the argument that we've got. So it's not particularly pleasant looking, but we didn't say it was going to be. So you can see why I called this first half of chapter 9 like the skills, because it's literally just learning what all of these different things go to. Anyone got any ideas of what you think I'm going to say we should do for uh, the second question first? 
It's going to be a chain rule thing. But I, I like to rewrite it, yeah? Because that's how we used to rewrite them. So I would, I would rewrite this as sec x cubed. So this is going to be pretty tricky because I've now got blah cubed. What does blah cubed differentiate to? Three blah squared multiplied by the derivative of blah. So this is going to go to three blah squared. That's just what you'd expect it to differentiate to. And you're going to multiply it by the derivative of blah, which is sec x. And sec x differentiates to sec x tan x. So we can simplify this. We have three sec cubed x tan x. And then I've put little notes of observation, which we will explore in the future. But the reason I've got this observation down here, I've said notice that when differentiating a power of sec, the power stays the same. This will be relevant when we come to integration. So look at what I mean by this. We started with a sec cubed, and in our answer, we had a sec cubed. Like when we differentiate sec to the power of 1, sec x, you still have sec x in your answer. So that's going to be useful when we get to integration. Integration is going to be going in reverse. We need to remember that, that those powers don't change. I think we're going to just do, I'm going to make up one more example that we might have here. This time I might do something a little bit easier. Maybe we'll do something like, I'm going to say a little bit easier, but you might not think it is. We might do the tan of e to the x plus sine 2x. We're going to differentiate this, because we can differentiate this. OK, there's nothing, no reason why we can't differentiate this. Do I need the product rule or the quotient rule? I don't need the product. This is not a product. This is a chain rule. This is a function inside the tan function. So I've got tan of blah here. And tan goes to sec squared. So it is going to go to sec squared blah multiplied by the derivative of blah. What does the blah bit differentiate to? e to the x plus 2 cos 2x. So we have, if I just rewrite the order, e to the x plus 2 cos 2x sec squared e to the x plus sine 2x. Careful, because this is one whole term. That's the argument in the, in the brackets of the bit I've highlighted in yellow. That is the argument. It's not being multiplied. It's the argument. And notice how it's the same argument as the original bit that we had as well. So the things you're about to do are going to look more, complica more complicated, but they are not more complicated. They are the same things that you have been doing before but they are now including differentiating tan, sec, cot, and cosec. So that's why I'm not doing hundreds of examples here, because it's just going to be the same things on repeat using these four new things that we've got here. OK? So we're going to have a look at exercise 9F, questions 1 to 7. The questions 8 to 11 are no longer in the maths A-level. This textbook was originally printed with the, with the wrong content. So questions 8, 9, 10, and 11 is only in further math. So we won't ever be looking at differentiating those things. It's actually differentiating things like arc cos x or the inverse trig functions, which you, you technically could work out as well. But it's not on our specification, so you can't be asked on it. So we'll have a look at some questions from exercise 9f. We've got about 25 minutes left, so I think this will be a good chance for us to do some, some of these questions practice on the whiteboard.